To kill Cerberus, you must either be on a Hellhound Slayer task or a Cerberus boss task. Cerberus also requires a Slayer level of 91 to kill, or you can boost your Slayer level using a Wild Pie with 86 Slayer or higher. The recommended stats to kill Cerberus are 90 plus strength, 90 plus range, and 90 plus magic, along with having 80 plus agility for the fastest route to Cerberus, or 70 plus agility for the second fastest route. These are my recommendations on what gear to wear to kill Cerberus using the three different combat styles. Please feel free to pause the video if needed if these slides are going too fast for you. For maging, I recommend wearing full elders, wizard boots, tormented bracelet, occult necklace, mage cape 2 or an imbued mage cape, and a imbued ring of suffering. You can swap out the imbued ring of suffering for a magus ring, which requires the completion of desert treasure 2, if you prefer to have more magic damage bonus and magic attack bonus. If you can't afford either of these rings, you can also use an imbued seer's ring or a brimstone ring. I personally think the imbued ring of suffering is the best ring to use here, as it will do damage back to the boss if it's filled with recoils. I also recommend bringing along an Accursed Scepter with the setup to spec Cerberus' magic defense down. You should also equip the Accursed Scepter in a Mage's Book or a Book of Darkness first before you head to Cerberus. That way, you can fit an extra piece of food in your inventory. For the inventory, I recommend bringing 6 Super Restores, 4 Sarah Brews, a Saturated or Imbued Heart, Thralls, and a Teleportation Method or Construction Cape so you can teleport out of the boss room. And the rest of the inventory should be filled with Anglerfish or the best food you can afford. For the T-Bone Blowpipe setup, I recommend wearing a Robin Hood hat, a Ranger's tunic, Ranger boots, a Necklace of Anguish, God Dehyde chaps and God Dehyde band braces, a 99 range cape or an Ava's accumulator, and a Ring of Suffering imbued. If you don't have a Ring of Suffering imbued, you can also use a Venator ring, which requires the completion of Desert Treasure 2, or an imbued Archer's ring, or a Light Bearer ring. For the inventory, I recommend bringing 6 Super Restores, 4 Sarah Brews, 1 Fordos Range Pot, Thralls, and a Teleportation Method or Construction Cape so you can teleport out of the boss room. And the rest of the inventory should be filled with Anglerfish, or the best food you can afford. For the Dragon War Hammer Blowpipe setup, I recommend bringing a combination of the Best in Slot range gear and Best in Slot melee gear. To help you land Dragon War Hammer specs, I recommend wearing an Amulet of Torture, a Regen Bracelet, a Zami Book, an Infernal Cape or Fire Cape if you have it. These items will help increase your Crush Attack bonus, which will help you be able to successfully land a Dragon War Hammer spec to lower Serb's defense. For the range gear, I recommend wearing a Robin Hood hat, a Ranger's tunic, Ranger boots, a Necklace of Anguish, God D high chaps, and a 99 range cape or a Aves accumulator. For the blowpipe, I recommend you use Dragon Darts or the best darts you can afford. I also recommend wearing an Imbued Ring of Suffering here as it will do a lot of damage back to the boss if it's filled with recoils. If you don't have an Imbued Ring of Suffering, you can also use an Imbued Archer's Ring, an Imbued Berserker Ring, a Imbued Warrior's Ring, or a Brimstone Ring. I also recommend wearing the melee gear first before you head to Cerberus, that way you can fit an extra piece of food in your inventory. For the inventory, I recommend bringing 6 Super Restores, 4 Sarah Brews, 1 4 dose super combat potion, 1 4 dose ranging potion, thralls, and a teleportation method or construction cape so you can teleport out of the boss room. And the rest of the inventory should be filled with anglerfish or the best food you can afford. For the T-Bow and Zarek crossbow setup, I recommend wearing a ranger's tunic, ranger boots, a necklace of anguish, god dehyde chaps, and god dehyde band braces, a 99 range cape or Ava's accumulator, and a light bearer ring. I also recommend wearing a book of law or zami book for when you ZCB spec. I also recommend wearing the ZCB and the book of law first before you head to Cerberus so that you can fit an extra piece of food in your inventory. For the inventory, I recommend bringing 6 super restores, 4 Sarah brews, 1 4 dose range pot, thralls, dragon arrows for the T-Bow, and a teleportation method or construction cape so you can teleport out of the boss room. And the rest of the inventory should be filled with angler fish or the best food you can afford. The fastest way to get to Cerberus is to either put your POH in Taverly or use a 99 construction cape to teleport outside the house portal in Taverly. When you are outside of the portal, you will need to run directly south through the city until you see a ladder which takes you into the Taverly dungeon. If you don't have a 99 construction cape or don't want to put your POH in Taverly, you can also get to Cerberus by running from the Folly West Bank. From the Folly West Bank, you will need to head south outside of the bank until you see a hole in the wall that you can climb over. After you climb over the wall, you will need to run directly northwest, passing the mining icon until you see the ladder to Taverly Dungeon. Once you go down the ladder, 
run north, and look for a strange floor that's located on the west wall. Pray melee, and then jump over the floor. Once you're on the other side of the floor, keep heading north past the Hellhounds until you see a cave entrance on the east wall. From here, you can take either the north, east, or west path. It doesn't matter which you choose. At the end of each path, you will see an iron winch that you can turn. Once you turn the winch, you'll be in the Cerberus boss room. For those with 70 agility, you can squeeze through the pipe located east of the ladder entrance when you go down into the Taverly dungeon. This pipe will take you into the Blue Dragon Room. I recommend sipping an anti-fire at the bank if this is the option that's fastest for you. From here, you will just need to run south through the Blue Dragon Room and make a U-turn into the Black Demons. You will go past the Black Demons and keep heading north past the Poison Spiders and past the Hellhounds until you see a cave entrance located on the east wall. Once you're inside, you can either take the north, east, or west path, it doesn't matter which path you choose. You will also see an iron winch at the end of the path that you take, and all you have to do is turn the winch, and then you'll be in the Cerberus boss room. For those that don't have 70 agility or higher, you will need to take the Dusty Key route. First, you will need to get yourself a Dusty Key. The Dusty Key can be obtained by talking to Valrock the Explorer, who is located in a prison cell in the Black Knight's Den. If you already have the Dusty Key, you can just go across the bridge here where the Scorpions and Dwarves are, and head north into the room where the Lesser Demons are, and just use your key on the gate. Once you reach the Black Knight's Den, you will need to go through the double doors and head east. You will see a Jailer outside of some jail cells. You will need to kill him to get a Jail Key, which then can be used on the prison cell door that Valrak is in. Once you enter the door, you can drop the Jail Keys and then talk to Valrak. Select option 1, or choose So Do You Know Anywhere Good to Explore, and he will end up giving you a dusty key. Once you have the key, exit the prison cell and head back the way you came. As a side note, you will not have to obtain the dusty key every time you want to kill Cerberus. You just need to get the key once and keep it on you for when you want to kill him again. However, if you lose the key or drop it, you will have to go back to Velrak and get another key from him. Once you get to the room with the lesser demons in it, you will need to use your dusty key on the gate to be able to go through it. Once you pass the gate, you will be in the blue dragon room. You will have to run through this room to the southwest until you see a path heading south. Once you're on the path heading south, you will eventually need to make a U-turn. You will go past the black demons and keep heading north past the poison spiders and past the hellhounds until you see a cave entrance located on the east wall. Once you're inside, you can either take the north, east, or west path, it doesn't matter which path you choose. You will also see an iron winch at the end of the path that you take, and all you have to do is turn the winch, and then you'll be in the Cerberus boss room. The fastest way to get to Cerberus is by using a Keymaster's Teleport. A Keymaster's Teleport will teleport you directly outside of Cerberus' lair. The only way you can get a Keymaster's Teleport is by receiving them as a drop from Cerberus. You can't buy them out of GE or trade other players for them. There are a few different ways that you can kill Cerberus. One of the lower cost options to kill Cerberus is by using a Dragon War Hammer and a Blowpipe with Dragon Darts. If the Dragon War Hammer spec hits, this method is very viable as the Blowpipe will tear right through Cerberus' defense. Cerberus is very weak to crush, so the Dragon War Hammer spec will typically hit very often here. If you don't hit with your first Hammer spec, you can always send the second spec right after and hope that it hits. Another way to kill Cerberus is with a Tumican Shadow Staff. This is one of the more expensive ways to kill Cerberus, as the Shadow Staff is currently around 1.4 bill, and each cast costs about 750 GP. If you decide to use this method, you will want to bring along an Accursed Scepter with you and start the fight off by specking the boss with the Scepter. If the Scepter spec hits, it will lower Serb's magic defense by 15%, which will allow you to hit more often with the Shadow Staff. Ranging is another good way to kill Cerberus. There are two different ranging setups that are very good to use here at Serb. The first setup is with a Xerite crossbow and a twisted bow. With this setup, I recommend bringing along with you a light bearer ring so that you can ZCB spec almost each kill during your trip. If the ZCB spec rolls a hit when you start the fight, you will hit Cerberus for 110 damage right off the bat. As a note, sometimes you won't have the amount of special attack energy required to be able to use the ZCB spec at the start of some fights. I recommend that you use enchanted ruby dragon bolts for your ZCB specs. The second ranging setup uses a Tebow and a Blowpipe with Dragon Darts. I personally prefer this setup as a Tebow Shred Cerberus, and you can heal yourself with the Blowpipe specs, which means you can potentially get longer trips. With this setup, you can average between 3-5 to five kills a trip depending on your RNG. In my opinion, ranging with the Tebow is probably the most effective way to kill Cerberus as a 1 defense peer.
There are two attacks that Cerberus does that you need to look out for during the fight. The first thing that you need to look out for is when Cerberus howls by saying Aru. When Cerberus does this, he will summon three ghostly figures. Red is melee, green is range, and blue is mage. You will either have to prayer flick these attacks while sipping super restores at the same time, or just tank the damage by safing up. Each of these ghosts can hit for 30 damage. The ghostly figures will always attack from west to east, and they can spawn in any order. When you successfully do a prayer flick, instead of taking 30 damage, your prayer points are drained by 30 instead. If you miss the prayer flick, you will then take 30 damage instead of losing prayer. The next thing that you need to look out for is when Cerberus says Gur. When Cerberus does this, he will throw three lava pools. One of the lava pools will be thrown directly at you, and the other two will land in random places in the room. These pools have an AoE damage effect, so do not stand near the pools. You will need to stand at least two squares away from them in order to not take any damage. If you stand near the side of the pools, you will take 10 damage. If you stand on the corner of the pools, you will take 7 damage. And if you stand directly on them, you will take 15 damage. It is a good idea to pre-stamina, pre-anti-poison, pre-divine ranging, and pre-divine super combat pot before heading to Cerberus. I also recommend eating an anglerfish after you're done pre-potting to get your HP as high as possible. You can also use a saturated heart or an imbued heart before you go to get that extra magic defense. If you can't use the 80 agility shortcut, I also recommend that you pre-anti-fire as well so that you don't get hit that high by the blue dragons if they breathe fire at you. For each of the different combat style methods to kill Serb, I recommend bringing Thralls along with you here if you have it. Thralls will do more damage in total than the two food inventory spaces that the book and pouch take up. If you're one defense, I recommend praying range the entire fight instead of praying mage. I know that the wiki suggests that you pray magic, but that is not the best prayer to use for one defense peers. This is because the range attack has a better chance to hit you than the magic attack does. With one defense, Serb's range attack seems to hit every time, and it hits really hard. If you're using one of the gear setups that I've recommended, Serb actually has a lesser chance to hit you with his magic attack due to having high magic defense bonuses on. As you can see in these clips, Serb is hitting zeros on me with his magic attack while I'm praying range. His magic attack looks and sounds like this. And that was my 60 attack 1 defense peer guide on how to kill Cerberus. I hope this guide has given you some clarity on what items to bring and how to kill the boss. If you have found a better method to kill Cerberus, please feel free to let us know in the comments below. If you have enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more guides like this one. Thank you for watching, good luck on your pet grind, and I hope to see you in the next guide.